Hi everyone, welcome to our online information session for the Communication Leadership Program at University of Washington. I am Liao Zhao, the Head of Outreach at Comlead. So in my role, I'm in charge of student recruitment, career services, and alumni engagement. Uh, before we start the session, I want to hand it over to my colleagues and our student ambassador to let them introduce themselves. Um, Jess, would you like to go first? Of course. Hello, everyone. My name is Jazz Espiritu. I use he and him pronouns. Uh, I'm the head of program affairs here at Comlead. Uh, a lot of the work that I do is manage the team operations as well as our student engagement initiatives. Thank you, Jess. Uh, Marina, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, my name is Marina. I'm a current student in the program. I'm part of cohort 20 and I'm in the MCCM track. And I also work for Comlead as the event and outreach coordinator. Doris, your turn. Hi, my name is Doris Torres. I use she, her pronouns. I'm also part of cohort 20 and I am part of the MCDM track. Thank you. And just to let you know that we'll also have Comlead Assistant Director of Academic Services, um, Heather Worko, to join us later during the Q&A part. Uh, for today's session, we'll start by giving you a brief overview of our program and curriculum, as well as the community and Chris support that we provide. And then for the second part, we'll answer the questions that you have. So feel free to type your questions in the chat box, or you can just unmute yourself to ask directly if you like. Uh, the session will be recorded and uploaded to Comlead YouTube channel so you can watch it later. Just now, I will hand it over to you to talk about our program and curriculum. Yeah, definitely. So as we wait for you all to prepare and type your questions, we wanted to start by talking a little bit about the history of our program. Uh, Comlead has been around for two decades, so about 20 years now. Um, a little over 20 years now at this point, started at, uh, it started as a response to changes in the communication field, uh, specifically in the mid to late 90s, with kind of the boom of social media, um, shifts in legacy media, as well as the rise of the smartphone. Uh, all of this um, helped us kind of create this program to prepare students for the fast evolving world of professional communication. Uh, Comlead has grown substantially and now offers three degrees, um, the Masters of Communication in Digital Media, Masters of Communication in Communities and Networks, and then um, the newly minted ma uh, Masters of Communication in Communication Leadership, which is a bit of a combination of all of it. Uh, when we ask our current students and alumni what aspects of the program were of particular value, they mentioned the strength of our community, specifically the students, faculty, staff, and alumni. <laughs> as well as the dynamic and relevance of the graduate program curriculum. So a few words on that curriculum. Um, our curriculum has a really strong responsiveness to constant changes in the field. Uh, um, as uh, we mentioned earlier with kind of how booming it was in the mid to late 90s with social media and how, how some other medias were kind of um, moving towards a, like being part of the past, um, we are still constantly seeing that to this day. So this program continues to respond to those various changes in the field. We focus very specifically on eight specializations, content strategy and user experience, marketing and analytics, organizational and professional communication, community and leadership, storytelling, ethics and law, Emergent Technologies and Trends, and Communication and Culture, which you can find all of these things on our website. Uh, students can decide to focus on a particular specialization. So if there's anything um, very specific there that kind of piqued your interest, you can take courses that are, are um, we have courses in our curriculum that are directed towards those specializations, or you can take classes across those different topics. A few re recent classes that we wanted to highlight here uh, that may be of some interest to some of you all are our multi multicultural marketing, psychology of user experience, and then communicating trust and credibility for emerging technologies. Now, earlier I mentioned that a particular value for our current students and alumni was the strength of our community. I'm thrilled to share with you a number of community building initiatives we've established for students to get to know one another and what makes our community so strong. We are fortunate to have an energetic community built in various parts, students, alumni, staff, and faculty. Ultimately, we cater our community engagement to your needs. This quarter, as we find some return to normalcy, our first community events have been reacquainting ourselves with campus, holding campus tours, 
Uh, and throughout the first few weeks, we've planned museum trips. We've got one later today uh, for our Comley students, get togethers at UW events such as W Day, other initiatives, including our peer to peer program, Comlink and our Discord server, which we started just a couple of years ago. We've also just created and hired a new student position, the Community Engagement Coordinator, who will keep their pulse in the Calm League community and develop social events and programs. Our community is at its best when we come together and we will continue to strengthen that. Uh, now I pass it uh, back to Liao to talk about what happens beyond the classroom. Thank you, Jess. So I would say other aspects of our professional program that students and alumni find very valuable or our flourishing community and all the opportunities that we have for uh, skill building and making connections through events like crit panels, alumni fellow workshops, networking connection, um, and also networking events. So when I say the flourishing community that we have, I mean like we have more than 800 alumni and faculty working across different global organizations. Um, and here I want to highlight um, uh, two recent graduates and alumni who got jobs. So one is Evelyn Guo. Um, she graduated this year and got a full-time job at Remitly as a content associate. Um, she also serves as an alumni fellow for Comley this year. And another example is uh, Wancho uh, Misa. He graduated from um, Comley with a Master of Communication in Digital Media. And he got a full-time job as a UX content designer at Facebook. So I wanna say that to help you achieve your career goal, we provide many opportunities for our communities to connect with each other. So first thing is we host monthly creative uh, events that is called First Friday. So every month we choose a company to collaborate with and organize a networking event for students to learn about their cultural also interact with the recruiter and the team. So in the past, we co-hosted First Friday with organizations like Boeing Company, We Communications, Google, Microsoft, and also some nonprofit organizations like City of Seattle. And for this upcoming general First Friday, I want to share because uh, we'll focus on UX and content strategy create paths, and we'll invite a few alumni who work at Facebook. Square and Starbucks to join us. This one, this particular one is open to all prospective students as well. Um, as a complete tradition, each January we make, we invite prospective students to join us. So I will put the registration link in the chat later. Um, Marina could help with that as well. So you're welcome to join us. Uh, please join us. Um, another thing that I want to mention is Comlead has a lot of work opportunities while you're studying here. So we provide partner opportunities, uh, part-time opportunities such as partner program and also hourly paid student positions. Uh, so for example, like Marina is our community outreach and event coordinator and Doris um, works, also worked as the outreach coordinator uh, last year. So on the end of that, we also provide a weekly jobs email to our community that includes on-campus job positions, internship, part-time and full-time job opportunities. And the good thing is when we share these opportunities with you, we make sure that we have an internal connections there um, so you are not alone. Um, so let me uh, stop here and I will hand it over to Heather to talk about our program specifics. Um, Heather, your turn. Thanks, Liao, and hello, everyone. Sorry I uh, joined a little bit late. Um, I'll introduce myself quickly before I get into this. I'm Heather Ruckel. I'm the Assistant Director of Academic Services uh, for the program, so I'm your academic advisor uh, for communication leadership students. And just to give some general information about uh, the program, uh, specifically for international students, it's helpful to know that all three of our degrees are designated as STEM degrees for OPT purposes. So this means that a student studying on an F-1 visa can get three years of work authorization after graduation. So that is a great benefit uh, of the program. We're also a fee-based program. So that means that all students pay the same tuition. Um, and this is great for international students as well as uh, domestic students from other states because there's no non-resident rate. Everyone pays the same uh, kind of resident rate of tuition. Full-time students will typically finish the program in five quarters. So students that are starting in autumn 2022 
will uh, finish typically in winter 2023. Uh, if you're going to be full time, it's also possible to finish in autumn uh, before that. Or we, I might have gotten the winter 2024 <laughs> is when they would finish. Um, also would be possible to finish in autumn 2023 for students that don't take summer off. Uh, for domestic students, uh, we should know that our degree can be completed part time. So we have a lot of students who are working full time while they're in the program. They can take one class per quarter. You can also take quarters off. Uh, some people have uh, jobs that go kind of up and down in terms of how busy they are during the year. So people can come say for fall, take winter off, come back for spring um, and can go through the program in that way as well. So it's very flexible. Part-time students do typically finish in about two and a half uh, to three years, um, but you have up to six years to complete the degree, so you have a lot of flexibility there. Like I said, about half of our students are attending part-time and working full-time uh, while they're going through the program. Our classes all meet in the evenings and on weekends to allow for that um, so that you can have a job during the day or for stu full-time students that gives them the days free to do internships uh, or be available for those kind of uh, career opportunities during the program. Um, as Leah mentioned, we have a number of part-time jobs and positions available both within ComLead and then across campus. Um, scholarships with our com uh, communication consulting or partner program. And all of our degrees are eligible for federal financial aid. Um, so you can use student loans um, to go through the program for domestic students. And we've also had a number of students use uh, GI Bill benefits as well. So a number of veterans in the program. Finally, uh, February 1st is our priority deadline. So if you're looking into the program now, this is great because you have almost two months uh, still to prepare your application, get ready to apply. Um, so definitely recommend if you're considering the program now, apply by February 1st. Uh, there's no advantage to submitting early though, so you can take your time with that application. We don't begin reviewing applications until after the deadline. So we don't do rolling admissions. It's just one uh, admissions process all at once. So you can feel free to keep tweaking your application right up until that February 1st deadline. But we do recommend that you um, designate your three recommenders who are gonna write your recommendations and order test scores if you're required to submit those at least two weeks before the deadline, just to give uh, time for those to arrive, for the recommenders to submit. So I would say designate your recommenders by early January and order your test scores uh, if you need to do that for English proficiency. But other than those elements, uh, you can work on your application up until that deadline. So that's the general overview of some important logistics for the application. And I'll stop here and hand it over to Marina for our Q&A part. Thank you. All right, everyone, you can start dropping your questions in the chat. Um, if you just send them publicly to everyone, I will call on you and you can unmute and ask the question yourself. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can also send them to me directly and I will um, ask them for you. Take your time to type in your questions and things we just have. I think we don't have that many people today, so you're welcome to just ask questions directly to unmute yourself. Hi, I have a question. Hi, Maya. Go ahead. Hello. Um, sorry if this was addressed because I had some Zoom issues in the first couple of minutes, but I was wondering um, for kind of like elective courses. Do people usually take them within the communications school or do they like branch out to different kind of areas within the University of Washington or kind of what's a common like path? Do people just follow kind of what they're interested in or stick to strictly like communications? Yeah, I can jump in and answer that. So uh, students are allowed to take up to five credits outside of the program. Uh, so it's usually one class um, that you can take outside of ComLead uh, from another UW department. And we've had students do that from like the Foster School of Business or Human Centered Design and Engineering, the Information School. I'd say those have been some common departments where people have taken advantage of that. Um, 
class they can take outside. But aside from that five credits, everything else must be within the communication leadership program. Um, and depending on your degree, if you're doing the MCDM, so the digital media or communities and networks degrees, um, with those degrees, you can take a total of 10 credits outside of your degree. So if you're an MCDM student, you could choose to take five credits from an MCCN class um, and say five credits outside the department or 10 credits of MCCN classes uh, as an example. So most of the classes you're taking are within your degree, uh, within the communication leadership program. Awesome, thank you. Hi there, um, I had a quick question about um, sort of the, the structure of classes in, uh, in what we hope to see as um, post pandemic times um, coming up. So as I understand it, you have been predominantly online as most of us have been the last couple of years and has it started moving? Is the goal to move to being fully in person? Are there classes that are always available online? Um, just, I was just sort of wondering about uh, the, the digital versus in-person structure of uh, classes. Yeah, I think I could jump in on that one too, and then uh, Jazz can add anything that I might forget to mention. Um, so yes, we, ha we are an in-person program at our core. Um, so pre-pandemic, all classes were in person. We offered nothing online um, before we had to pivot to online uh, due to the pandemic. So this fall quarter, we have a mix of uh, some classes online, some with in-person components. And then for winter, we're moving much more back towards uh, a hybrid format where classes will be on campus, uh, maybe with a few sessions on Zoom, uh, but we're only offering four classes in winter that are fully online. Um, and then the, the goal is to continue that, you know, progress of moving back towards being an in-person program uh, in future quarters. So we might offer one or two fully online classes um, in the future, um, but we are doing our best to move back to being that in-person on-campus program as soon as it's safe to do so. Hi, I have a question. Um, first of all, hello from Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I wanted to ask about um, designating your recommenders. The way that I understand it, it just means that you need to confirm that they will be giving you a recommendation or do they actually need to have already written a recommendation? Yeah, great question. So before you designate them in the application, do be sure that they've already agreed to write a recommendation for you because as soon as you list them in the application with their name and email, they get an automated email right away. So you just wanna make sure that they're expecting that uh, before it goes out. Um, but then once they get that email, they have until the application deadline uh, to submit their, their recommendation. And it's a combination of a short question questionnaire that they fill out um, in the online system. And then they have the opportunity to either type, paste, or upload uh, a letter uh, as part of that as well. So as you just make sure that they already know it's coming before you designate them since they're gonna get that automated email right away. Okay, cool. Thanks so much. I also have a question. Uh, thank you all for your time as well. I am very new to communications in an academic setting. And, and so right now it's sounding like it's really focused on corporate settings for work post, um, post degree. Is that accurate or is there more opportunity for other avenues? I saw Dora shaking her head as well. So I want to see if she wants to jump in. I wanted to give Marina the opportunity since she's part of MCCN, but I can I can speak on it. I'm MCDM, um, which means that I'm part of the digital media cohort. And my experience has been that I've actually worked with nonprofits in classes, especially since a lot of the classes you may have um, a mixture of students. And so it, and a lot of the alumni that I've worked with or talked to have been from a variety of um, nonprofits and for-profit um, organizations. So I feel like this program particular to other programs that are um, communication-based have that advocacy equity like already placed into the program. It's part of one of some of our tenets. So I would say that um, there's plenty of opportunities. Um, for example, 
I know that the last year when, or during the start of COVID, there was a few partner programs where people were able to disseminate information um, to the public, creating campaigns about masking up. And so I know there's a lot of opportunities to be able to do that. Um, I'll, I'll leave it to anyone else to talk about it since it's not my major. Yeah, I think probably the MCC Amtrak is a little more specifically tailored to nonprofit work, or at least I, I think we have more people with that aspiration in that degree track. Um, and there are a lot of classes that kind of set you up for that. We have um, storytelling for mission-driven organizations as a class, for instance. Um, so there are plenty of opportunities to, um, to kind of set you on track for a career in that field if you're not really looking for a corporate job afterwards. Beautiful, thank you. Okay. And we have a question in the chat. Um, will there be an advisor to assist us with course planning? That's me. <laughs> so I'm the academic advisor uh, for all students in the program. So uh, I would be the person to contact with any questions about uh, what classes to take or meeting degree requirements. Hi again. Um, I was wondering, are there any kind of things going on for students to connect outside of classes? Do you, is there any offerings for graduate students, um, such as like clubs, I'm not sure, but anything to keep us engaged with one another? Hey, Maya, I will, uh, I'll take this one. Um, so we have a number of community engagement initiatives that we've put into place, especially during this time of the of the pandemic, uh, and we're only continually like um, growing in that. Although this quarter has proven to to be just um, sometimes a, a little heavy in some parts, but we've been able to respond to that uh, those challenges, which has been pretty great. So um, earlier I mentioned Comlink, which is our peer to peer program, which allows uh, incoming cohort members, incoming stu uh, Comlead students to connect uh, one on one with a current student in the Comlead who share the same values and experiences and probably the same like career trajectories. Uh, we, t we allow like students to kind of take this survey and then we pair folks up based on those kind of like similar experiences. Not so much in like a mentor mentor, like a mentor mentee uh, relationship, but more along the lines of like, this is somebody who has either similar experiences, identities uh, or values. And um, you may want to just connect with to see kind of like what their opinions are on certain classes uh, and in um, kind of going through um, almost like similar mindsets. So that, that's one one initiative that we started last year. Another thing that, we, that came out of the pandemic was starting a Discord server. Um, so that is an online platform that allows our students to connect with one another, kind of share different like recommendations for Seattle or um, talk about classes, um, and even be in like virtual voice channels and, and like these virtual rooms to as like study rooms, uh, uh, just as opportunities to hang out in the past. We've held movie nights there as well as uh, game nights in there um, in the past, too. So um, it's really great if you especially if you're uh, looking for like where are the best boba spots in Seattle? This is a great place to like put your question into the discord and, and get an answer from your commonly community. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, we did some museum visits this, um, this quarter. Uh, our last one for the quarter is happening actually later tonight. Um, but next, next uh, for the next few, our, the, the rest of the year, we actually have a ton of uh, ideas and plans and programs that are gonna be happening now that we've, um, established our a student engagement coordinator who's going to be kind of keeping an eye on the community, have a pulse on what their needs are in terms of like connecting with one another. Uh, and I met with the coordinator just uh, uh, last week and they are ecstatic about the different kinds of events that they're going to be holding for for the for the community. And we we see this position itself being a very like pivotal one for for the community itself, as well as for us as a as a staff, as we kind of navigate through um, the different things that that could keep folks connected and, uh, and with one another, uh, and and um, real quick, I just also want to point out too, like 
as as folks in the community as as a, as active students too they all, everyone has a hand in making something and doing something for the community and molding it in the way that um that is really conducive to them so coming to me and coming to the student engagement coordinator about what kind of events you want to see those things stick around with us and and they um and and we work with you to kind of make it happen i, I was just oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead go ahead okay um I was going to add that um, as a current student, there's also a lot of opportunities um, at the University of Washington. I currently um, do participate in GOMAP, which is a graduate student organization for um, students of color. And especially as a first gen graduate student, it was really helpful to talk to other students across different fields and see um, how um, to get support that way. But the, um, when you first get accepted to the um, program, there's a questionnaire that you can fill out on um, different like interests and affinity groups that you may be wanting to know about. And then they'll send you like a bunch of emails on how to like be active. So there's plenty of opportunities even outside the program to um, know other graduate students. Yeah, and that's what I was just gonna um, put the link in the chat real quick of the uh, RSOs, which are registered student organizations at UW, there's over 800 student clubs um, at UW. So pretty much any interests that you have, there's a group that's focused around that. Since if you if you check out that list with like over 800 um, there. So as a Comlead student, you have access to all of those resources for all UW students as well. We have another question in the chat. Um, where do communication leadership graduates end up professionally? And how does the internship work at the end of the program? Um, I think I can talk about that, uh, Jenny, uh, your question. Um, regarding the where our graduate students uh, work at after graduation, um, so many options. Um, no matter you are graduate from MCCN or MCDM, I see that our alumni work at tech companies like Microsoft, Amazon, AWS, and also working in industries um, like uh, Starbucks, REI, uh, Redfin, as well as some nonprofit organizations like City of Seattle, um, um, King County. Um, but also we have a number of students, they just create or to their own business, have their own start startup companies. So, very uh, different uh, career paths. And in terms of um, the career that they pursue, some of them work at, in the PR agencies like a PR uh, manager or a social media account manager. And some of them work as a UX designer or UX content designer uh, or a UX writer. Um, so if you go to our website, I will also put that in our chat. So you can take a look at where the career paths will lead students to uh, for both MCDM, MCCL, and MCCN. Um, and another question as for the internship, I think you were mentioning about the internship work for the MCCL. If you're not going to do the MCCL, you can do internship anytime uh, during your program. If you're domestic students, if you're international students, I think the policy would be a little bit different that Heather could talk about um, that. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, we send out monthly, uh, monthly and also weekly uh, newsletter uh, to our students so you can see the opportunities that we provide within um, the program on campus and also off the campus. Um, Heather, would you like to mention about the internship uh, for MCCL? Yeah, so our MCCL degree is the only one that requires an internship credit. Um, students are welcome to do that in the MCDM or MCCN for electives if they want to, but for MCCL students, they have to do at least five credits of internship, and that can be at any point in the program. Um, it's not it's not a, a final quarter thing, and actually, we usually recommend people don't wait till their final quarter um, to do internship. It's better to do it earlier in the program. Um, that is a, a, since it's for credit, there's an application process. So basically you obtain the internship on your own um, using those resources like the weekly newsletter that has postings or different connections with other students um, or alumni to find out about positions that are available. And once you get that position, um, then there's, you fill out a form saying, this is where I'm gonna be working. And these are my, my dates that I'll be working and my learning objectives there. And then you can register for the class um, after you submitted that. So um, it's just an, an application that you do once you get that position um, during the program. OK, 
Okay, we have a new question in the chat. For any who feel called to answer, in what ways do you feel most empowered as a direct result of attending this program? And how are you able to incorporate storytelling in your daily work and life? I can go. So I think one of the most empowered ways that the program has helped me is just, um, I think being able to tell my own story, you know, this quarter I took the professional um, development class and I was able to really solidify and understand where I wanted to pivot. I am a mid-career um, student and so I've had 10 years of experience um, pre the program and I knew I wanted to move towards um, video content and UX in comparison to before where I was working um, in higher education and marketing. And the program really helped me like decipher like where to go. It gave me a lot of opportunities to do one-on-one in um, one-on-ones with um, alumni and um, and and staff members. And so it really gave me the opportunity to, I guess, in a way, find myself and find my voice. And so um, one of the best opportunities that I have done is like um, with Marina, I did a practicum in in the spring which resulted in me getting hired by my professor into his company. He's an alumni too. And after he graduated, he created his own video company. So now I make um, so, uh, um, video content for nonprofits. And so um, while I'm still at MCDM, I'm still finding ways of crossover, working with um, so many different um, people and so many other classmates that um, really inspire me every day. Yeah, I think for me, it's probably also the fact that I don't really have much of a background in communications pre -com lead. Um, So just the fact that we get to build our portfolios throughout the program with hands on projects. Um, and like having the knowledge that once I graduate from this program, I will not only be able to say like, oh, I learned these things, but I'll have like actual portfolio pieces to show for the work I've done. And I think I'll feel a lot better about my job search knowing that I'll be able to like showcase the work. Um, I've been able to do. Oh, I think there was actually a second part to the question um, that we didn't really talk about a lot. How are you able to incorporate storytelling in your daily work and life? Um, I don't know, maybe the reason maybe you can tell us how you're incorporating storytelling in in your work now. Well, I talked about it a little bit, but um, yeah, so currently I um, work for Block by Block Creative, where I am doing the interviewing, script writing, and, um, and really story assembling for the various nonprofits that th this agency works for. Um, I also, um, now that I'm moving towards pivoting towards UX, something that I've also noticed is that I have gained the confidence to be able to really like talk about um, the research and strategies that I'm using. So I'm able to um, really um, state my case on why we should um, take initiatives. And a lot of these projects have all been in class. And so what's been so great is someone um, that hasn't had that experience and background, I am now able to go into these rooms and talk about like the ethical reasons on why we should change the way that these applications are working. Um, and that's a direct result of some of the classes that I've taken. I've taken the ethics of UX um, and their psychology of UX. And um, that class really like it changed my life on the way that I realized that I was um, like really good at that. <laughs> and to the point that I now, um, I got also the opportunity to um, help write a chapter in one of our professors um, second edition of his book. And so I went from knowing nothing of UX and being really intimidated to now really feeling like I um, can really succeed in the field. Um, okay, we have one more question. How competitive is it to get into the program? 
You never really know until the application deadline because it depends on how many applications we get in any given year. The last few years, we've gotten uh, roughly around 400 um, applications to the program, and our incoming cohort, uh, we're usually aiming for about 100 students in that. So we admit a little more than that to try to get to that number uh, since some people are applying to multiple programs or have had life issues come up since they applied and won't necessarily accept our offer. Um, but I'd say generally it's about um, a little over 100 offers out of around uh, 350 to 400 applications has been typical. Um, are there any common mistakes you notice on applications? I love this question. <laughs> That's a good question to ask. Um, I check in all the applications, um, but I don't review them or, or score them. So um, I kind of go through that first pass on them. And some common things, um, the biggest mistake I see that just makes me cringe and I wish people didn't do this is don't apply to more than one degree within our program. You've wasted $85 if you do that because we consider all applicants to communication leadership as a single pool. pool. So if you submitted an application for both the MCDM and the MCCN, it's just a duplicate because we're looking at all of them um, together. And so please don't apply to more than one. Uh, don't waste your money or, or effort putting together two applications and um, just choose which degree is the best fit for you and apply only to that one um, in the program. I'd say aside from that, the video, we ask for 90 seconds. We mean it, don't submit a three minute video. Um, so keeping to those limits um, on both the video and the, the statement is a 500 words for the statement. Don't submit a novel that's 10 pages long. Um, so just really paying attention to those uh, requirements for the different elements and kind of the limits that we're looking for there um, and staying within that um, can can be uh, something that that is just an easy thing to not make a mistake on. Yeah. Marina and Darius, do you have any tips to share? Yeah. Um. I guess for me personally, the video was the hardest part just because it was kind of like I felt kind of awkward having to record myself and I had to do that over and over again. And I, I eventually ended up submitting like the second one I recorded. Um, so I guess like it's your story you're telling. So don't overthink it too much, I guess. Um, just be authentic and like, you know, really figure out why you want to do this program. And I think it'll shine through if you're a good fit. Um. So I um, something that I, I um, really thought about is that like it, it is only 90 seconds. So like use whatever is at your disposal. I try to like pick out my outfit to be like the reflection of it, like who I thought I really was. And I like put plants in the background. Like um, I had kind of fun with like being able to be like, well, I have 90 seconds, but maybe if I use the background and I like use my outfit, then like they'll be able to tell my personality more. And so that was important to me, but I've heard from like professors and even like Heather and, and classmates that have come up with some pretty cool ideas of knowing that you can think outside the box if you want to, if that really shines your personality, as Marina said, like be true to yourself. But I think one of the ones that I thought was um, really interesting that I think Heather told me about was that someone went into their closet and like picked out items of clothing that were like, that really like told a story. And so um, just know that like the most important thing is like telling who you are in whatever way that makes sense. Like that's probably the best. Okay. Uh, one quick addition I'll make to that, um, just on Haley's question about mistakes, is don't repeat information. Keep in mind that the, the reviewers are looking at all aspects of your application. So if you already talked about something in your statement, don't talk about it again in your video because then you're wasting an opportunity to talk about something else. Um, so make sure that every part of your application is distinct and you're not repeating anything. Okay. 
Um, Janie is asking which degree has the most applicants and I guess that's actually a question I get quite often in my emails it's just also does it make a difference which track you apply to like is it more or less likely that you'll get in if you choose a different track no absolutely not we we, we again we look at a whole pool of applicants and whoever the top ones are whatever degree they happen to have applied to. So we don't have quotas per degree. We're not saying we're gonna admit this many of each degree. Um, it's really just looking at the whole pool of applicants. So I'd say make sure you're applying to the degree that's the best fit for you, because then your application will, will stand out as being a really good fit for the program. Whereas if you try to submit an application for a degree that it's obvious this isn't the right degree for you to apply to, you will have a, a, a lower chance of getting admitted because we're not going to see the fit um, with the program. So just pick the one that's best for you because we're not we're not choosing based on what degree you're applying to. And are there a lot of recent undergraduates in the program? I don't want to monopolize. Like I have all these data answers. <laughs> this year, I'll put the link in the chat for our, our program overview. If you scroll down on that page, it has the program demographics for this year. And you'll see on there, um, just over half of students in the program have finished their bachelor's degree within the past four years. Um, so they're fairly recent graduates. And then the other half are, you know, a range between folks who have been working five to nine years or 10 or more years um, in industry. I'd say we we have been getting an increase in UW students coming back, which we love. Um, we want to keep our Huskies around. So I think this year's cohort, uh, almost a quarter of the students in this fall's cohort are were UW undergrads and are coming back um, to do grad school here as well. So um, there's there's really a good mix uh, of people with work experience or recent undergrads, and then also UW undergrads as well. Okay. One more question we have is from Trem. Will the lack of work experience be a disadvantage? Um, I don't know if you mean if it'll be a disadvantage for your application, because I think the answer to that is no. But also, once you're in the program, I would not say that it's a disadvantage, because you will you will have lots of classmates, like as Heather said before, um, that are mid-career or that have more work experience. And like, I'd be lying if I said I'd never found myself thinking, oh, like they have so much experience that they can talk about or that they can apply here. But at the end of the day, I think my learning experience is probably just as good. Um, all the classes start from square one. So you can join any class and um, it doesn't matter if you know anything about the topic prior to it. Um, and I honestly think it's an advantage that we have people with more um, work experience because it's been really helpful for me to just learn from what they have experienced in their careers. So um, I would not say it's a disadvantage, but I don't know if other people want to pitch in on that as well. Uh, I wanted to say, um, likewise, coming from someone who you know had um, work experience, I'm speaking with students that have less work experience or completely different work experience, you know, that are coming in from bio biology degrees or, you know, like, um, I don't know, history degrees or whatever the case may be is that um, I'm learning every day about different ways. I mean, when I was a student in undergrad, I'm totally aging myself, but like social media was just like on the precipice of like, this might be a way that you could use it. And like, you were still doing like meetings with journalists. And so um, while I've learned a lot of the stuff um, in the field, a lot of students are coming in, taking some really great classes that are coming into um, graduate school with all this experience that I had to learn and stumble across where they already had that expert experience through the classroom. So the mix, I think, is something that's so important because um, we're all able to learn from each other. You know, we have some, even within the com um, field, we have video storytellers, we have UX designers, we have um, international students that I'm learning so much from like their experience. So I think the mix, um, wherever you're at, whatever experience you have is so important. Okay, one more question we have for Mina is what's the crucial point um, to choosing the students? Um, thanks for this question, Mina. I would say uh, since our program is a professional program and it's looking at, you know, helping students develop their careers, when you're talking about like what your career goals are and why this degree specifically is going to help you reach them, that's one of the most important things that the, the admissions committee is looking for is why this degree, why now, 
what are you wanting to do with it um, in your application? So we're looking for that future and is this a good fit for what you're wanting to do? So if someone talked about in their application that they were wanting to do something that we have no classes that address that or we have nothing that would help a student, you know, prepare to do that, then they're not going to be a good fit. So we're looking at, you know, is this a good uh, combination of, you know, the program and what we offer and what that student wants to learn, I'd say is, is very important. Aside from that, I mean, people have to meet the UW Graduate School's minimum admission requirements for us to consider them. But on outside of meeting those requirements, we're not as concerned with, you know, what your GPA was, as long as it meets the requirements there. Since we're not an academic research program, we are a professional program. So we're looking at, you know, what do you want to do next um, is, is most important in making that clear in your application. Not just that you want to live in Seattle. We've had people spend half their statement talking about how they loved sleepless in Seattle and want to come here to go to grad school. We want to know why this program specifically uh, is going to help you do what you want to do. Okay. If one is coming in with a previous master's from UW, is there a better way to frame that in the application process? We've had a number of students with previous masters or even a few, you know, doctorate uh, degrees coming into the program. It's not really a factor in, in admissions. It's not something that the committee's looking at um, because we have people um, who are career pivoting. You know, as Dory said, they have a very different background and now they're wanting to go into communication. So we've had medical doctors, you know, they have an MD coming through the program because they're just wanting to learn new skills. So I'd say it's not a factor in, in consideration. Um, it's uh, just one piece of your past um, that's in there. Okay, it looks like we've gone through all the questions that are currently in the chat. Um, so if anyone has any more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat now or unmute and ask. Okay, looks like we've been through most of the questions people have. Um, if you have questions later on, you can always email us. Um, I'll put my email and also the Comlead email that I think Heather answers in the chat. So you can reach out anytime if you have more questions and I'll hand it back to Liao to close us out. Uh, thank you, Marina. I don't have more uh, to add. I would just say, you're encouraged to join our upcoming January First Friday to talk with our alumni and also current students to learn more about our program. And also I see that in the chat, uh, Heather and Marina has put on the email contact that you can reach out. Um, for next Friday, we also have a student-led uh, info session, uh, which is focusing on international student experience. So you're welcome to go to our website and to register for that event too. Thank you for joining us.